Hello everyone and welcome to Pachi Travels. I am Pachi and today I am delighted to share with you my recent trip to Northern Ireland. This is the first video of a series about Ireland, so don't miss it. Despite its small size, Northern Ireland has a lot to offer. Castles, forests, and spectacular cliffs followed by meadows full of sheep, live music pubs, and beaches. But let's not forget that Ireland is a country full of legends and authentic movie-worthy landscapes. The best part is that all of this is concentrated in an easily explorable country, rich in both past and recent history, that speaks of giants, mythical transatlantic ships, and political uprisings. If you travel to Northern Ireland, it is worth exploring the country at your own pace for a few days to fully embrace its greenery, fog-covered coasts, and the stories the cobbled streets of its towns and cities have to tell. Northern Ireland is Belfast, yes, and also the Giant's Causeway, of course, but there is so much more to discover and I assure you that all of its landscapes will captivate you. If you visit Northern Ireland as part of a cruise, I also recommend checking out the videos on my channel where I talk about excursions you can do from the Irish ports. Although we can shape this trip in multiple ways, one of the itineraries that will offer us the best panoramic views is the Causeway Coastal Route. A road that takes us along the Northern Irish coastline for about 120 miles, almost 200 kilometers, from Belfast in the southwest to Derry in the northeast. And it is by following this route that we will come across the eight visits that I propose to you today. The most likely scenario is that Belfast will be your starting point on this route through Northern Ireland, but Belfast is much more than that. If you can, it is highly recommended that you dedicate at least a couple of intense days to the capital of Northern Ireland. In the Northern Irish capital, you will see constant references to the Titanic, as it was here between 1909 and 1912 where the famous transatlantic ship was built, which now rests at the bottom of the ocean. For that reason, one of the recommended visits in the city can be found at the Titanic Belfast, a huge and impressive museum that transports you back to the early 20th century, to the atmosphere of the city, to the importance of its shipyards, and to the entire history of the ship, from its construction plans to its tragic accident. On the other hand, it may also be interesting to visit its city hall, which more than a city council seems like a palace, or the Crumlin Road Jail, which can tell us 150 years of troubled history. Although, of course, we cannot leave Belfast without taking a route through the city's murals, many of which are very good, reminding us of the Northern Irish conflict of the second half of the 20th century. In Northern Ireland, we can see several castles, although in some cases, we may have to settle for the ruins that remain of them. That is not the case for Carrickfergus Castle, just 20 minutes away from Belfast, as it is in very good condition. It was originally built in 1177 by John de Courcy, and although it has naturally undergone different reconstructions, no one can take away the merit of it being there for over 800 years. It can be visited, is usually used to host different exhibitions, and has a good repertoire of canons ranging from the 17th century to the 19th century. We leave the coast for a moment and briefly head inland to reach the Dark Hedges. It is possibly the most famous tree tunnel in the world and a must-visit for Game of Thrones fans. Here, the conveniently closed-off road allows us to stroll through the beech trees in a movie-like landscape, although to truly enjoy its magic, I recommend going early or late in the day, as many people visit. As we continue up the Northern Irish coast, we pass by other interesting points to see, such as the village of Glenarm, its castle, and walled gardens, Glenara Forest Park, the scenic Tor Head Road, at the closest point between Ireland and Scotland, until we reach our next stop, Carricka Reed Rope Bridge. This impressive suspension bridge originated in 1755 when salmon fishermen needed to cross to Carricka Reed Island to check their nets and today it is one of Northern Ireland's most striking tourist attractions. If we dare, we can cross it and pass over a 30-meter deep and 20-meter wide chasm. And if not, we can always admire it from the Port Nevi scenic viewing point, but believe me, if I crossed it, anyone can. Without a doubt, the Giant's Causeway is the most famous and representative place in Northern Ireland. And it is, in fact, the only site declared a UNESCO World Heritage by the country. This geological formation emerged over 60 million years ago when molten lava suddenly cooled upon contact with the sea water, and it stands out for its mostly hexagonal basalt columns. At the Visitor Center, we can learn all the details about its formation, and an audio guide will accompany us on the pleasant walk that leads us to these peculiar rocks. Popular tradition tells legends that the causeway actually emerged from the battle between two giants, Irishman Finn McCool and Scottish Benendiner, and that it was built by McCool to cross the North Channel and reach the other island to confront Benendiner. What remains of that stone path is what we can see here today. 
Not far from the Giant's Causeway is Dunluce Castle, another well-known image of the country and, of course, also a Game of Thrones setting. It is worth getting closer to see its ruins from both inside, as it can be visited, and outside, especially from Maguerecross viewpoint. Its origins date back to the first millennium, although the remains we see today mainly date from the 16th and 17th centuries, and it was inhabited by rival clans McQuillan and MacDonald. Its silhouette, perched on cliffs, offers one of the most beautiful images of this route through Northern Ireland. And we arrived in the city of Derry. The name Derry comes from Doyer, which means Oak Grove in Irish. The city of Derry is located in the northern part of the country, next to the River Foyle. It is the second largest city in Northern Ireland after Belfast, but its historic center, completely walled, is small yet charming, lively, and very picturesque. We can walk along its one-mile wall, completely encircling the city. Along the way, we will find different informative panels where we can read historical information about the city, which will be useful to understand everything that happened here, as it played a fundamental role during the Northern Ireland conflict. In fact, just like in Belfast, we cannot leave Derry without taking a stroll around its surroundings to see what the numerous murals tell us and take a photo with the house that welcomes us to the Catholic neighborhood, which is now an icon of the city. If you are interested in content about Ireland, you will be glad to know that I am currently creating more videos about some cities in Ireland and their points of interest, as well as some Irish ports where ferry lines and cruises are common. Thank you very much for watching the video. See you soon. Thank you.